Hey everybody, Zachary Avery here, and I just wanted to talk to you today about um, just a crazy, I connected some dots today that just kind of blew me away because it's crazy to me how like self-care and the concepts of self-care and the importance of self-care are ingrained everywhere that I look. And so today I want to um, talk about chemistry, actually, like the this like science, this the scientific study of chemistry, and I want to relate it to self-care. This is really interesting. It might be a stretch for some of you guys, but just stick with me and see what you think about this. And so um, my video today is going to require like a like a tiny itty bitty crash course in chemistry. So bear with me on that too, while I give you just a quick explanation of some like 101 chemistry, and then I'm gonna relate it to our lives and to self-care. So um, in the study of chemistry, and in the study of science in general, we talk a lot about atoms, and an atom is like the unit, or, or an atom, if we're talking about everything that exists from the, from its largest components to its smallest components. Like an atom is the smallest, um, it's the smallest thing, right? And it makes up everything that is, right? So we are made up of atoms. Everything that exists is made up of atoms. Like it, its smallest components are, are called atoms. But even an atom has its own anatomy, right? So an atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And so, I'm going to have a little whiteboard here. So let's say that this is an atom, okay? And then so in the center of the atom, we have its nucleus. So the atom is made up of protons and neutrons. And then the electrons are orbiting. So they're surrounding. So um, we have an understanding, like, we have different models to explain electrons, but a, a really common model that's used is called the Bohr model. And it's just a way to visualize electrons. So the Bohr model um, would say that there are basically like rings. There are like circles, like a, like a shell um, around that surround. And these are where the electrons orbit. This is where the electrons exist. And this is true of every atom, regardless of what the atom, regardless of what element is involved. So the electrons in the, in the innermost ring, the very first ring, there are two electrons. And then after that, every ring, all these rings are going to have eight electrons. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or that's the goal. That's its max capacity, is that every, every electron ring after that is going to have a maximum of eight. If it had more than eight, then it would start on the next ring, and then that ring would have eight, etc. So what's really interesting is atoms are constantly interacting with each other, right? And elements are interacting with each other. Um, and what's really interesting about these electrons is is this concept of of wholeness right so like when this ring has eight electrons it is whole it is complete it is stable right and so when if this was um a molecule um an atom sorry if if some of my terms are sloppy science really is not my forte so i might butcher these concepts just a little bit, but you're getting the gist of this. Okay. So say that it had, so this one has uh, 10, 11. So this one has 11 electrons here. So there are two options because this is the thing, is this wants to be stable. It wants to be whole. So this outer ring is either seeking seven additional electrons so that it can be whole, or it's seeking to give away this one that it has, okay? So there's this really, really fascinating concept in chemistry where this one, because it's gonna be easier for this to give away the one extra electron that it has 
rather than seeking out and trying to find seven additional electrons. So what it's going to do is it's just going to give that away when it gets the opportunity, okay? And then what's going to happen is that this is now really stable. It's really complete, right? Because now it's gone down to that, that next ring, which is full. So this is really fascinating to me. And now I'm going to try to make this applicable to us and to our lives. Because um, I feel like psychologically and spiritually, we are constantly um, desiring to feel these things, right? We're constantly desiring a sense of wholeness, a sense of stability, a sense of um, complete, right? Being complete. And so in the context of self-care, it's really interesting because in, in a really broad sense, like self-care is our journey to those concepts, right? To those destinations, to those, uh, to embodying those concepts. So it's interesting because self-care, we typically think of it as something, we, we think of it as adding on additional things, right? We start adding like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do more, right? But interestingly enough, self-care can be the opposite. It can be subtracting things, right? So for example, like self-care could be starting a yoga or meditation practice, so that would be adding something. But at the same time, self-care could be taking something away. So it could be looking at all the commitments that are on our plate and maybe saying no to something. That would be taking something away. Or it could be looking at our relationships and noticing that there's some toxic behaviors or environments or people and um, eliminating those from our lives. So that's, those are examples of how self-care can be, it can be adding things or it can be subtracting things from our lives. So, so this is what I find really interesting, and I'll bring it back to this analogy. So say, let's, let's go back to that initial thing, right, where we have that one extra electron here. So self-care could be, so self-care is a pursuit of wholeness. It's a pursuit of stability. It's a pursuit of having that completion, right? And so if you're here, you could add things. You could add practices, right? You could add to your life, right? You could add yoga, meditation, journaling, reading, like there's all these self-care practices that we know that you could add, right? So that's an option. But what is also an option, it is taking away. You could remove that toxic person or you could remove um, some of the busyness that's in your life. What's interesting is that either way, if you're here and you're adding those things, we can find completion that way. Or if you didn't add those things, because this is the thing, sometimes self-care can be stressful for people because they're like, I already have a really full plate. I already have a lot going on. How am I going to add more stuff on? And that creates anxiety and that creates more stress. So what I'm saying is that self-care can also be taking something away. It could be removing that commitment or removing that toxic relationship. And my point is, when we do that, when we take away, rather than adding a bunch on, when we take away, we can still find that wholeness. We can still find that completion. We can still find that stability. So I'm saying you can add or subtract. Don't think this is only about adding. You can add or subtract. You can go either way. And so... In chemistry, what these, what these atoms do is they do whatever's easiest, right? So like if it has one extra electron, it's going to be easiest for it to just give that away, get rid of that, rather than adding seven more, okay? So this is my, this is my idea, and this is my, this is my tip for you, is do whatever's easiest. If you're going to have to add on a bunch more, to, to supplement for where you are, maybe it's easier to just give some away, right? You can add or subtract. So I hope this made sense. Please let me know. Um, if it didn't, I can make another video and hopefully explain it a little better. But this is something 
um, that I found really fascinating that comes from the world of chemistry. And to me, as someone who's studied and, studied and written about self-care for so many years, it was just like, I, I was able to connect dots and it made a lot of sense to me. So hopefully it serves you and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.